Hey, what's happening, guys? Good morning. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Today is Valentine's Day. Today is Tuesday, February 14th, 2023. We got a lot of stuff to cover today. We're going to be talking about how the markets closed yesterday. Uh, we're going to be getting the CPI numbers today. They're expected to come in hot. On Thursday, we're getting the PPI numbers. Um, we got a uh, Fox Business article, Relentless Inflation and Surging Prices Have These Americans on Edge. Uh, we got an article from The Economic Collapse talking about that train wreck in Ohio. That's an absolute disaster. Uh, it's amazing that it's not being covered by the media. Uh, we're going to be talking about real estate as a whole, as well as specifically the Las Vegas real estate market. I saw a good video, uh, actually kind of a good series of videos by a YouTube channel by the name of The Real Estate Mindset. Uh, and this guy uh, traveled out to, I think he's been traveling the country, but he specifically Specifically in this video, uh, traveled out to Las Vegas to kind of visit some of these, uh, some of the large home builders' projects and kind of see what was going on. Um, and he saw a flurry of building activity, uh, but almost none of these homes were under contract. There were no buyers out touring these homes, um, and he's expecting a big collapse in the housing market in Las Vegas. Um, we're going to be talking. Uh, I guess a little bit about Airbnb. We are expecting Airbnb's earnings today. Uh, JP Morgan has inked a deal with Ukraine, uh, 20 billion for the reconstruction of Ukraine. Uh, we're gonna be talking a little bit about uh, student loan forgiveness and if it's gonna happen, uh, Supreme Court will be deciding on that. I believe it's February uh, 28th. So uh, let's kind of hop into all of this stuff. I got my morning coffee here for you guys could join me and uh, we'll kind of go through some of the news today. <coughs> Excuse me. So before we hop into today's video, shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Refersion, Refersion.com. You can check out uh, my link in the description box below. Refersion is an affiliate uh, affiliate marketing management platform. So if you guys are affiliates yourselves, uh, you guys can join Refersion as an affiliate and they have a affiliate marketplace uh, where you can go out and search for specific companies, search for specific products. If you wanna look at a category like uh, business to business, SAAS, uh, health and wellness, you can go find affiliate programs uh, for niches or products that may appeal to your audience. Uh, kind of same concept as like CJ.com. Um, and also if you guys run a Shopify store, if you have some type of business and you're looking to get affiliates working for you, you know, we're starting to see people moving away from the influencer marketing model. Um, you know, influencers had gotten big heads. It's not worth $3,500 to get one post uh, from somebody with 10,000 followers on Instagram. Uh, a lot of people are transitioning over to an affiliate model where if the affiliates make a lot of money, you make a lot of money, it's a win-win for everybody. Uh, if the affiliates don't drive any traffic and don't drive any sales, you're not paying them anything. A lot of people are also starting to do kind of a hybrid model where maybe you give somebody a small amount of money upfront guaranteed. I'll give you 100 bucks, 250 bucks, uh, but the rest of your money you're going to have to earn through driving sales as an affiliate. So if you have a Shopify store, a big commerce store, a WooCommerce store, and you're looking to set up an affiliate program to have an army of affiliates working for you, uh, bloggers, YouTubers, uh, people on social media, uh, check out Refersion. Uh, it's the only uh, affiliate marketing platform I use. I manage affiliate programs for five or six different brands and uh, I use uh, Refersion for all of them. Super easy to set up. You can set up automatic payments with PayPal. Uh, link in the description box below. Uh, so today we're gonna be getting the CPI report. Thursday again, we'll be getting uh, the PPI, the producer price index. Uh, economists are expecting CPI to have increased 0.4%, uh, which translates to 6.2% annual growth. Uh, we got a CNBC article, inflation, sorry, my notes are a little bit scrambled today. I know I have to say that every day. Uh, inflation report Tuesday may deliver bad news. If CPI comes in higher than expected, markets could get hit hard, uh, and the Fed may have no choice but to get very aggressive with interest rates. Uh, let's see, may come in, okay. They may come in better than expected, and if that is the case, it's likely that the numbers were manipulated. Uh, data was being manipulated with that recent jobs report that showed 525,000 new jobs. Uh, in reality, it looks like we maybe actually lost 2.1 million jobs before they manipulated and fudged numbers. Uh, but you know, they wound up coming out and saying, no, we we got 525,000 new jobs. Uh, you know, I know the uh, the Fed is saying inflation is at 5.6%. Are you guys seeing prices coming down in the grocery store? Um, you know, I've noticed bacon's a little bit cheaper. Bacon's kind of back to normal. Uh, you know, beef prices have come down a little bit, but uh, a lot of things are still very, very expensive. And when one category uh, of groceries or goods comes down, it seems like another one goes up. You know, bacon prices came down, uh, but now it's costing me $7.99 for two heads of romaine lettuce. Uh, it's likely that the true inflation rate is probably two to three times uh, that 5%. 
5.6% that the Fed tells us. Uh, Fox Business said an article yesterday, relentless inflation and surging prices have these Americans on edge. Uh, and it talks about how, you know, they, they interviewed a couple people who are kind of struggling to get by. And it said, you know, things aren't just going up by a few cents. They aren't going up by a quarter or 50 cents. Uh, you know, it's noticeable. You go to the grocery store and you buy something that you haven't bought in a couple weeks and it's two or three dollars higher. You know, prices in the grocery store continue going up. Uh, this is one of the, the big stories of today. And this is kind of what the thumbnail of this video represents. Uh, we got an article from the economic collapse. So there's a town in Ohio called East Palestine. And on Friday, there was a railroad accident. 50 cars, uh, including 10 carrying hazardous materials, uh, wound up derailing and catching fire. There were massive plumes of smoke uh, and fire uh, sitting above the city, just kind of hovering above the city. Uh, the EPA and the railroad company, of course, say, oh, you know, nothing to worry about. Uh, kind of how the, uh, the the city and the EPA in Jackson, Mississippi said, the water's clean, the water's fine to drink, you can drink it. You remember a couple years ago in Pennsylvania when they were fracking and uh, people could actually light their water on fire, the water was coming out brown. And uh, I think it was Biden, or not Biden, I think it was Obama as well as like the, uh, the head of that fracking company said, oh, the water's perfectly safe to drink. And at some type of town hall meeting, someone brought him a glass of water and said, okay, let, let's see you drink this. Uh, of course, he didn't wind up uh, drinking the water. Uh, kind of like Flint, Michigan, your water's safe to drink. We care about you. Um, and they've been giving people poisoned water for decades. Well, uh, you know, in and around, I think within 30 miles, 50 miles, maybe even further uh, of new, what is it, Palestine, Ohio, uh, people's pets are dying, people who keep chickens in the backyard, uh, their chickens are dying, livestock is dying. Uh, there's videos on Twitter of people, you know, taking videos of streams and rivers and it's just dead fish everywhere. Uh, I think there was some type of fox sanctuary out there and uh, the foxes are dying off. A bunch of them just look lethargic and kind of out of it, they're limp. Uh, this is an ecological nightmare. It's getting absolutely no coverage from the mainstream media. Uh, I believe they initially evacuated houses as this vinyl chloride uh, was released from, I think it was initially reported as five. I think it may have been 10 cars. Uh, the closest disaster to this was, uh, I think a decade or two ago. Um, and it was like maybe a quarter uh, of what was released in, uh, in this accident. Um, we've also since learned that even more toxic chemicals were released into the environment. Um, journalists who have gone to this town to report on it have been arrested. Uh, mainstream media isn't covering this. Why isn't the mainstream media covering it? Well, guess who owns this railroad? This railroad is owned, it's uh, the what Norfolk Southern, I believe it's called. Uh, the railroad is owned by BlackRock and JP Morgan. BlackRock and JP Morgan also own most of the media. Uh, so no wonder they're not covering their ecological disaster. Um, and the way that they decided to clear this was to, I guess, puncture holes in the, in the trains, uh, let all this stuff leak into, leak into a ditch and eventually, you know, leak into the groundwater systems and wells and things like that. And then they set it on fire. Well, why did they do this? Because if they were to properly clean it up, it would have shut down their railroad line for probably weeks, if not months. But, uh, if you just leak everything into the environment, set it on fire, uh, you know, who cares what it does to the people of those towns? Who cares what it does to the environment? At least our trains can start running again. And, uh, you know, what, 10 years, five years, 10 years, 20 years down the road, uh, how many of these people will have died from this? How many of these people will have cancer? Uh, how many of these people's kids will have birth defects? Uh, some of the chemicals that were released were actually used as like chemical weapons uh, back in World War I and World War II. I believe this is kind of a poor town. A lot of these people probably don't have any choice but to go back to the town uh, I believe the railroad had offered the town $25,000, which comes to, I don't know, 5 or $10, maybe $20 at most per resident uh, for giving them cancer, ruining their lives, killing their animals. Um, and again, why aren't you hearing about this from the mainstream media? Uh, especially after the past three years, we heard, you know, nothing about how much the mainstream media cares about our health and wellness. Um, and, you know, now they're just willing to turn a blind eye. It's also kind of interesting how all the environmentalists, all the people who want you to drive Teslas, all the people who are super concerned about global warming, uh, which, you know, may be true, may not be true. If it is a problem, it's a problem 100 years down the road. Uh, but nobody seems to be concerned about this imminent problem going on right now. Uh, let's talk about uh, real estate and housing and kind of the Las Vegas real estate market in particular. <clears throat> 
There's a YouTube channel called The Real Estate Mindset. I just stumbled upon it the other day. He's got some interesting videos. He is traveling the country, uh, visiting new home builds, visiting home builders, and kind of reporting on what's going on. Uh, in some of the recent videos, he was visiting, I think he's from Houston. He's been kind of traveling the country. Uh, but he went out to East Las Vegas near Henderson. He visited several large home builders projects. Uh, he said very few were under construction. Uh, when he was out there, you could see nobody was out looking at homes. Uh, it was tracked homes as far as the eye can see. And these weren't super, super high-end homes. Uh, these were kind of moderately priced homes in the 300,000s, uh, the, the homes that are supposedly in demand that most people want. And there was nobody out there touring these homes. Uh, we know from some recent videos we talked about, and we've got recent stats from uh, KB Home Builders, 68% of new home builds are being canceled. Uh, home builders are having to buy down rates and offer all types of incentives to get people interested in buying. Um, and this is gonna make new homes more attractive than used homes or homes on the secondary market, uh, which will in turn drag down homes on the secondary market. Uh, and also you gotta keep in mind, home builders cannot sit on these homes, right? Home builders make money from building homes, selling homes, moving on and building more homes. Uh, they can't sit on all this inventory. They have loans to pay back. Um, you know, interest rates are high. Uh, they have to move these homes, and to move these homes, they're going to have to drop the prices, uh, which in turn is going to hurt the secondary market. And this could ultimately wind up being uh, what kind of triggers the housing market downturn. You got to keep in mind, these home builders started building these homes because of 0% interest rates, and now we have 5 and 6% interest rates. So it's a lot harder to get people to buy these homes. Uh, and a home that may have had a $1,300 $1, payment uh, a year ago, a year and a half ago, may now have a $3,300 payment because rates are up. Uh, the, uh, so I was reading a little bit more about the housing market. A lot of these uh, increases in home prices were fueled by uh, buyers FOMOing into the market where we're starting to hear uh, what 74% of people, 68% of people uh, have regrets about their home purchases. Also, you have, you have more and more people getting into Airbnb. Um, a lot of these people buying property specifically for Airbnb. Obviously, uh, doing Airbnb typically tends to pay better than long-term leases or long-term rentals. Yeah, you're probably going to have more vacancies, but you're also making a lot more money per night uh, renting it out short-term than you are, you know, if you were to calculate, you know, if you charge somebody two grand a month uh, for a normal lease, uh, that's not going to pay as much as renting it out at, you know, vacation rental prices. Um, the, the, the rest of the time. So what winds up happening if a lot of these people who are over leveraged in Airbnbs, you know, the Airbnb uh, market starts drying up, people kind of start traveling less. Also, a lot of people are souring on Airbnb. I'm actually taking a trip in just a couple weeks here and I didn't even bother looking at Airbnb. Airbnbs have gotten incredibly expensive. Uh, the taxes and fees and all the other things that go along with it uh, have gotten really high. It's kind of frustrating when you find a place and it's okay, it's 150, it's 200 bucks a night. Uh, you know, three nights, that should be 600 bucks plus a cleaning fee. Okay, you know, maybe it's gonna be 700 bucks, whatever it is. Uh, but then you actually go to check out and it's like $1,600 and you're like, what the hell? Um, and they're charging like a $400 cleaning fee and there's, you know, this city tax and that fee and this turnover fee. Uh, Airbnb has just gotten much less attractive and unless I'm traveling with a large group of people, um, you know, I've just kind of started looking at hotels for my travels. Uh, also, hotels have kind of realized that Airbnb is a competitor of theirs. Uh, hotels are starting to lower rates. They're adding more amenities, free breakfast. Uh, hotels are trying to bring people back. Uh, what happens if the Airbnb market starts drying up? Some of these people who had a, a profitable Airbnb, that Airbnb is no longer profitable. They have a mortgage to pay. Maybe they have several mortgages to pay. And they say, okay, well, you know, maybe I'll just rent this out like a traditional, you know, traditional lease. I'll get somebody for a six month lease or a 12 month lease. Well, that six month or 12 month lease may not wind up paying the same amount that Airbnb paid. Um, and in turn, maybe that won't cover somebody's nut. Maybe that won't pay for uh, the mortgage, the homeowner's insurance, the taxes, everything else that goes along uh, with maintaining a home. And now these people are, are, are underwater and their choice is to either lose money uh, with a traditional lease um, or to sell the home. Uh, that could also send the housing market downwards. Uh, we have Airbnb has an earnings call today uh, at 4.30. Uh, although investors are actually optimistic about the numbers that Airbnb is gonna post uh, and the stock actually jumped, uh, was it 7% yesterday. 
Uh, JP Morgan has inked a deal with Ukraine. Uh, they're going to get $20 billion for the reconstruction of Ukraine. Uh, you're in my tax dollars, uh, hard at work making Jamie Dimon and his cronies rich. Uh, you know, they're making money off the bombs, they're making money off the war. Um, and then after they make a big mess, uh, they're going to make a bunch of money. They're going to get a bunch of our tax dollars to clean up the mess that they made uh, and all for what? Uh, I saw another interesting stat the other day. 63% of student loan borrowers say that their financial stability relies on debt forgiveness. Um, you know, last I checked, we have 11 million job openings. Obviously, most of these are service sector jobs, part-time jobs, uh, and low-paying jobs. But if you need money to pay your student loans um, and uh, you got laid off from your tech job or the tech job you were hoping to get, uh, is no longer hiring. Well, the good news is it's burrito season and Chipotle is hiring 15,000 workers. So you can go get yourself a job at Chipotle. Uh, the Supreme Court is set to decide on student loan forgiveness on February 28th. Um, and even though, you know, my opinion is it's illegal, the media is trying to paint the picture that uh, this is legal, but the evil conservative court is going to decide against it. Uh, I think we have a couple solutions that would really correct this problem. It wouldn't fix it entirely, but it would help it a lot. Uh, if you want to go to college and you want to get taxpayer-backed loans, you have to take an aptitude test to get into college. You also have to maintain a B average. Um, you know, student loans affect a lot of people, but in the grand scheme of things, only somewhere between 13 and 17 percent of adults have student loans. Um, and what's really kind of messed up, people have had a three-year break uh, of not having to pay student loans and not having to pay interest. Um, and while some smart people out there did take the opportunity uh, to really pay down the principal heavily, uh, a lot of people cho chose to buy new cars and big screen TVs and buy homes instead of down paying down their student loans. Uh, also, everybody wants a free ride. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Every Everybody wants free money. Uh, so a lot of people chose not to pay off their student loans because they felt like I'll be a sucker if I pay off my student loans and then they wind up being forgiven six months, a year down the road. Uh, the can cannot be kicked down the road any longer. They can't pause student loans any further. Uh, if the Supreme Court does not side with Biden, uh, student loans are going to resume at the end of the summer and that could definitely trigger the recession. Uh, and that's if you don't believe that we're already in a recession. Um, let's see, uh, World Health Organization is beginning to talk about how bird flus could start spreading among humans. Uh, they tend to signal what they plan to do, so get ready for a human bird flu. Uh, you know, get, get your health in order, guys. We learned from the Mexican beer cough. Um, if you're overweight, if you have pre-existing conditions, if you're not healthy, if you don't have a robust immune system, um, you know, diseases and illnesses are going to hurt you. So get yourself in shape. Uh, start working out. Join a sports league. Ride a bike. Go to the gym. Join a gym. Uh, start eating a little bit cleaner, eating a little bit healthier. Uh, you know, kind of get, uh, get your body in order. Uh, U.S. gasoline demand is on the rise again for the first time since June. Uh, U.S. gasoline demand was not only up every day over the week. Uh, okay. <laughs> U.S. gasoline demand was not only up every day over the past week period, uh, but also over the four-week average. And uh, I think we got this later on in the notes, uh, but Joe Biden is tapping into the strategic oil reserves again. If you guys remember, uh, back leading up to mid midterms, he was ta uh, tapping into the strategic oil reserves, uh, which are actually meant for national emergencies, wars, etc. cetera. Uh, why did he tap into them? He tapped into them so he could lower gas prices a few cents leading up to the midterms. Uh, he's continuing to tap into them uh, since then. Uh, they need to be replenished. It's going to cost more to replenish them now, especially now that China has opened back up. Um, and Joe Biden continues tapping into the strategic oil reserves. We got an article from the New York Post. Uh, you guys may have seen this one. Uh, some guy in a U-Haul rampage through New York, plowing down New Yorkers on the sidewalk. Um, you know, every time something bad happens with guns, there's talk about banning guns. Uh, are we going to talk about banning U-Hauls now? Here's an interesting stat for you. More people died last year shoving objects up their buttholes uh, than they did from AR-15. So, you know, maybe we should ban butt plugs and dildos. Um, you know, and I think this is kind of a lesson to everybody. Crazy stuff goes on. There was a mass shooting uh, at the, not University of Michigan, uh, Michigan State University, I believe it was yesterday. Uh, I think three were killed, five were injured. You know, have some situational awareness. Don't have two headphones in. Uh, don't be staring at your phone. You know, kind of pay attention to what's going on around you, uh, especially if you're in an urban area or a city or a populated area. You know, you got kids playing knockout games on the streets of Chicago. People are mugging each other. There's, you know, shootouts even in the, in the, the nice neighborhoods of Chicago. Um, you know, and there's just kind of crazy stuff going down all the time. You know, be aware of what's going on around you. 
Uh, okay, so here I got my notes about the uh, the release of uh, oil from the strategic oil reserves. Uh, zero hedge article. Uh, the Biden administration uh, releases 26 million barrels of oil from the strategic oil reserve. Uh, again, this is beyond retarded. Uh, we have Ukraine and Taiwan. Uh, you know, potentially we're potentially going to be going to war uh, to protect uh, Ukraine and Taiwan. We have things floating around in the skies. Uh, maybe we're going to go to war with Ukraine. Maybe, or maybe we're going to go to war with Russia. Maybe we're going to go to war with China. Uh, maybe we're going to go to war with the aliens. You'd think you'd want our strategic oil reserves topped up, uh, but no. Let's continue to drain them for no reason. This is a national security risk, um, and it's just kind of crazy. Uh, recent survey came out and found that 30% of teen girls have considered suicide in the past year, and 60% of high school girls say they feel persistent sadness and hopelessness. Uh, the numbers for men weren't quite as bad, but they are also on the rise. Uh, what is it that's kind of destroying our mental health, right? Like, in a lot of ways, it would seem like, okay, you know, we let trans people go to the same bathrooms as, you know, we let people pick the gender of what bathrooms we want to go, they want to go into. Uh, we have these anti-bullying movements. Uh, we've changed the name of the Washington Redskins. Um, in a lot of ways, it may seem like society should be friendlier and more empathetic, uh, but people are more unhappy than ever. You know, what, what's that about? Um, and in the last article of the day, the U.S. military is coming off the worst year for recruitment in decades. Uh, this past year, they had wanted to recruit 60,000 soldiers. Uh, they fell short by 25%. I believe they've, uh, you know, it used to be you couldn't join if you had visible tattoos. You had to have a high school diploma. You can't have any drug arrests. Now they've pretty much opened things wide open because nobody's, not only does nobody want to join the military, uh, but nobody is in good enough shape to join the military. So don't have a high school diploma. No problem. We'll let you in. Have visible tattoos. No problem. We'll let you in. Uh, have a criminal record. No problem. We'll let you in. Uh, but they still are falling 25% short. Uh, apparently, they did a survey and they found that most people didn't want to join the military uh, because they feared dying, right? I think that's always been kind of a concern about joining the military, but it does seem uh, like we continue to get involved in more and more senseless conflicts. Uh, also, people are worried about PTSD. And I think that is something new. Uh, you know, in the past, you know, they when people came back from World War II, or, or Vietnam, they you know called them shell shocked. They knew people were kind of messed up, but we didn't really know what PTSD is. Uh, we have a lot more knowledge about PTSD. I think a lot of people have seen friends, family, relatives uh, come back from Iraq or Afghanistan with a lot of issues. I know I have a couple people in my family uh, who you know can't sleep, have have some kind of mental health issues and things like that. Uh, but also. You know, I don't know about you guys. Uh, you know, if I were to join the military, I'd be joining the military uh, to fight for my friends, my family, my community. Uh, I'm not looking to protect Israel. I'm not looking to protect Ukraine. Uh, no wonder people don't want to die, go die for other countries. Um, and also the military is all woke now. The people who traditionally would join the military, uh, you know, young conservative men from, you know, rural America, uh, those people don't want to go have, uh, you know, rainbow cake lightings to, to celebrate uh LGBTQ month, you know, they don't want to celebrate the trans community. There's nothing wrong with the trans community or LGBTQ, uh, but that's not why you join the military to, uh, to, to do those things, right? Uh, you join the military to protect the country. The military used to be a, a very kind of masculine place. Um, and uh, the military used to be a place filled with people with, uh, I think, kind of conservative values. And uh, that's kind of gone away. So a lot of the people who traditionally would have joined the military uh, are going to have very little interest in joining the military today. Um, so I think that's kind of uh, all we got to talk about today. We're about 23 minutes in. If you guys enjoyed today's video, do me a favor. Uh, hit that thumbs up button down below. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below and ring the bell. Uh, as always, I would love to hear your thoughts, comments, and opinions about anything and everything we've discussed today. So go ahead and drop a comment down below. Uh, that's all I got for you guys, and I'll catch you on the next video, guys. Later. Peace.